Okay. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Capella. I'm with the American Meteorological Society. I'm senior editor for the Bulletin of the AMS. And we're here today with uh, Dr. Dennis Hartman. He's a professor in the, in the Atmospheric Sciences Department at the University of Washington. And he is the 2013 recipient of the prestigious Carl Gustav Rossby Research Medal. Medal. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Chris. It's a great honor. I'm uh, really humbled by it. Uh, the citation for this award uh, reads, uh, and I'm quoting this, you were given this for significant contributions to the synthesis of knowledge of radiative and dynamical processes leading to a deeper understanding of the climate system. So for our viewers, uh, people may, that may not be familiar with your work, can you give us a, a, a general idea of your research? And uh, I have a couple of follow-up questions after that. Well, my, my research deals with both the uh, dynamics uh, of the atmosphere and the radiative uh, and convective influences. And so I work both in the area of uh, large-scale dynamics and also uh, radiation and climate. And a at a particular emphasis on the role of clouds and how they interact with the uh, large-scale uh, circulation and also the role of radiation in uh, controlling clouds and clouds in controlling the radiative energy budget of the climate. I see. So you're, you're doing, uh, you've kind of ramped up into doing quite a bit of work with the climate system now, is that right? Uh, that's right. It's a very interesting uh, interdisciplinary problem. If you want to understand climate, you have to take some of the traditional disciplines that we've had in the atmospheric sciences, radiation, dynamics, cloud physics, chemistry, all these things have to be uh, brought together because they're so interconnected on the long time scales associated with climate change, which is one of the very important problems of this uh, century. I see. Uh, since there are so many facets of this, uh, we can't touch on everything here, but can you give us some of the highlights of, you've been doing, your, your career stretches back you know, many decades, uh, but even in the last 10 years, there have been huge advances, advances in technology, and how has that played into uh, increases in your research or, or different directions for your research? Well, I've made a lot of use of uh, remote sensing data from uh, satellites in my research. Also, combining that with uh, models of the global climate system and also models that actually resolve the uh, physics and dynamics within cloud systems. The climate models, because they have to cover the whole Earth and have to simulate it for long periods of time, they have to make uh, parameterizations or they have to approximate how the clouds are related to the uh, large-scale circulation so we can, and the climate, so we can observe that with satellites, we can simulate it with models, and I think the one thing that I've tried to do is to look for uh, simple fundamental explanations for how things work, and that gives us more confidence in the rather complex simulations that we do with global models. I see. Uh, one of those uh, areas where you tried to help out, especially the undergraduates, uh, I was a Penn State a uh, meteorology student back in the mid-90s and uh, used your book. Oh, uh, excellent. Yes, yes. It, it, was, uh, it was very helpful and it was, I think it was a good read as far as trying to help the student understand it from a, from a basic sense but then bring it into a more in-depth understanding. Well, thank you very much. That is the, the idea, is to approach climate broadly from the perspective of, uh, of a physicist, uh, someone who has a background in calculus and physics. And it's still, I'm in the process of trying to revise that uh, book now, which has taken quite a bit of effort. I was gonna ask you about that. I, I saw that, um, Wendy, are you thinking uh, of a publication date? Anything uh, set? I wanna get the, uh, the second edition out before the first edition is more than, uh, 20 years old. So that gives me about a year. I've been working on it pretty diligently uh, here uh, recently and I'm hoping to meet that schedule. I see. All right, and for those interested in that book, it's Global Physical Climatology. Uh, the original edition came out in 1994. That's right. So I have to uh, ask you then, when you were notified of this award, I believe that was back in October or November, 
Mm. Yes, something like that. <laughs> so what What was your reaction when uh, when you got the phone call? I was uh, very surprised. Uh, I, I thought the call uh, had something to do with uh, some project I was working on. I was sort of surprised by the the person that it came from. I was delighted, very surprised. I wasn't expecting it. Um, extremely grateful to the the people who uh, nominated me and to the uh, committee for selecting me for this award, which is a great honor. Well, very good, and and uh, and a good one. Um, I wanted to follow up since you've had a number of students, both undergrad and graduate, over the years, uh, and you've also had quite an extensive career. Uh, a lot of that experience can help them out, and I wonder if you might share some words of advice uh, for some of them, whether they be recent graduates or maybe mid-career and looking to advance their careers and and do new things. What can you share and and tell them to do? Well, um, that's a very good question. I think persistence is uh, very important and uh, also searching for good fundamental problems that are not only uh, intellectually challenging but also uh, practically important. I think atmospheric sciences remains uh, an intellectually challenging and stimulating field, but it's also one that's uh, extremely important uh, for society, for uh, whether it's uh, weather predictions that you're trying to do, uh, natural hazards associated with the weather, climate change, air quality, whatever it is, these are all challenging and complex problems that are also very important to uh, society. So think about not only your uh, um, intellectual colleagues, but also your customers or the public. Good advice. Well, thank you. Uh, congratulations again, and thank you for taking the time to speak with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the AMS annual meeting in Austin, Texas. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay.